Um, final talk of the day. My suggestion is everybody slows down their um, metabolism to allow more oxygen to the speaker, <laughs> if possible. Uh, yeah, not too slow. Yeah, not too slow. <laughs> <laughs> Corner on the corner for a conference photograph and a beer in that order. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a photo after. Anyway, um, yes, we'll say what's happening after the talk. After the talk, um, now there's a talk. Um, it's Elio. Uh, he was introduced yesterday, so I won't do it again. Um, no, you might have changed. You've done no introductions. <laughs> I really think. Okay, I'll introduce Elio. <laughs> well, that's good or bad. I shared an office with Elio for a while. So. Um, uh, I know him back when he was a um, PhD student in Karlsruhe. Um, he then went on to the US, to Rutgers, and anywhere else Wisconsin. before moving to um, to uh, Wisconsin. Yeah. Okay, before uh, returning to Germany, where he's currently a leader in Stuttgart, uh, Max Planck. That is an excellent quote. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> also, a reasonable musician, good footballer. Um, I could go on. Generally, a good guy to share an office with if you ever get a chance. So, with that in mind, um, let's hear about entanglement and topology and triplets. Okay, very good. Thanks so much for the introduction. Um, okay, uh, I'll try to keep you awake. Uh, and exactly this is the second talk that I'm giving here. And it's actually uh, two stories that I'm telling you. Uh, and for both stories, there are two collaborators, out of which two are at the conference, namely Pierce and Dirk, in different parts of this. Uh, and uh, the other collaborators are Yasha Komijani, who is now at Cincinnati, uh, junior faculty, and Michelle Ramp, who is now a PhD student in Dresden. And the common theme, actually, of this talk is um, uh, Strong quantum fluctuations in triplet superconductors. I'll get to that in a second. Okay, so um, I'll start with the, the part which is with Pierce and Yashar, and I'll start with the motivation grid. And the motivation goes back to uh, the early days of the Cook breaks. And here you see Phil Anderson sitting next to Georg Bednar. So he was close to the source of information at the Woodstock of Physics. And this is the phase diagram of the Cook breaks as of 1987. Uh, and I would just use this to motivate Phil Anderson's idea of RBB theory. So RBB theory is the following. Uh, at the modern insulating state, it's sort of uh, postulated that it is uh, described uh, by an RBB state as a ground state. This is, of course, um, not exactly the case in, in experiment, but maybe the experimental state is somewhere close to it. Um, and uh, this RBB state is actually a quantum spin -like uh, and it's a, a state which is a superposition of all sorts of uh, single bonds between, so these are single bonds between different sides of the square. <clears throat> okay, and then the idea of RBB theory as a means of getting superconductivity from entanglement rather than as in BCS theory is that you can dope this system and you already have pre entangled pairs, and that essentially. To get a superconductor, all that you have to do is just add spark, um, and that will be sort of becoming immediately a superconductor uh, rather than a natural. Yeah? Okay, and in heavy fermions, a similar mechanism uh, can be at place, and instead of doping, you will have a uh, condo coupling, which is uh, uh, maybe coupling this to some conduction electrode, the spin liquid to some conduct conduction electrodes. Okay, so the idea here is pairing from entanglement, you start from a spin liquid. And you sort of dope it and you get a superconductor. There's the reverse situation that you could think of. You have a T wave superconductor. The reverse situation would be you think of the spin liquid as a quantum disordered superconductor. After all, the, the RVV state is a good solar projected BCS state. Right? So it means that you have killed the, the possibility of having a, so essentially it's a quantum disorder in the sense that um, I think it's charging energy or something. The phase has been a quantum disorder. Basically. Good. Um, so what I'm actually going to speak about today is entanglement topology in triplet superconductors rather than the single D wave superconductor. And the first question that I would like to address is whether we can extend this RBB theory to uh, systems with local ferromagnetic interactions. Uh, and is it actually a way to create triplet pairing rather than single pairing? Uh, and from there, we'll actually go from an from a analogous story of this uh, single orbital problem, I will go on to a multi-orbital discussion of a uh, superconductivity from entanglement to local ferromagnetic interactions. 
Uh, and then I'll switch actually here to something completely different at first sight, uh, which is uh, quantum fluctuations in triplet pairing. Now I'm going actually from right to left. Uh, uh, but there is the common theme, which is these quantum fluctuations. Okay. <clears throat> so I'll start with the first part, which goes by the name of triplet resonating valence bond theory. And this is the part together with Pierce and Jeff. So let's start first, what is a valence bond? And then what is a triplet valence bond? So in RVB theory, the valence bond is given by a singlet, which is up, down, minus, down, up. And it's actually the ground state of a, a two-sided Heisenberg, uh, isotropic Heisenberg model, uh, uh, and uh, which is given here. Okay, and to go from singlet valence bond theory to triplet valence bond theory, uh, you actually, form for this two-side problem, just a unitary transformation of 180 degrees of, on one of those two sides, which is going to flip the sign, the relative sign between these two terms here, and you end up with this state, which is actually the triplet mz equals zero. And of course, uh, if you want to build a spin liquid out of it, uh, what you do is you pile your uh, bonds with all of these with all of these. So you have your lattice with bonds of this kind here. And the important bit is that you have, you start with L pairs. And of course this here is the same uh, L pair as, as the same entanglement properties as this one. You can equally well construct spin liquids out of this. In terms of the Hamiltonian, what this means is actually that you're discussing now an, uh, an easy plane for a magnet, right? So it's X, X, so minus X, X, minus Y, Y plus Z, Z. Okay, so what does this imply? If you do, for example, this uh, rotation now for a macroscopic system, you start with an RVB state, let's say on a three-dimensional cubic lattice, you can actually go from here to here just by a unitary transformation. And instead of having this RVB state, you end up with the TRVB state. They're of course equivalent just because up to a unitary transformation. What it translates to in terms of observables though is that this one in three dimensions actually RVB uh, even short range RVB is a way of describing an antiferromagnet. This state here is actually long range antiferromagnetic order. Uh, here it would lead to a long range easy plane ferromagnet. So here we have really states which are uh, equivalent by means of this rotation on every other side because it's a bipartite lattice. You can also do it in two dimensions. So you know it's a you have a quantum spin liquid in two dimensions, uh, and then you do this rotation and you end up. Another quantum spin liquid, but now with local triplet bonds. Okay. Um, actually, you could also describe this RVB theory as uh, uh, you know could study this RVB theory using an effective timer Hamiltonian, and of course timer Hamiltonians are actually very similar both for RVB and TRVB theory. So essentially, there's a one-to-one. -one but it's a little bit more interesting when you leave bipartite lattices. For example, you take a triangle lattice. Then you cannot do any more this trick of rotating every other side because the system is not a bipartite lattice. So in fact, this and this state they are not anymore related to each other by a unitary transformation. But at the same time, as I said, so it's the same timer model. So in terms of time, this timer model description, you actually can uh, conclude that a TRVB state on the triangular lattice actually has Z2 topological order just the same way as it has for Z. Okay. So um, I would like to actually spend a little bit of time on a microscopic model uh, and materials applications and a, a mean field um, calculation uh, to explain how it works in a single orbital problem. So I'm starting with this Hamiltonian that I already showed. It's, uh, let's say it could be a 2D square or triangular lattice with this uh, easy plane ferromagnetic interactions, minus xx minus yy plus zz. And plus dot 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 means that, okay, ultimately I'm going to speak about spin liquids and I don't have uh, a, I don't have a Hamiltonian where I know that the RVP state is the ground state. I'm going to do mean field theory. As a way of controlling it in a large N way, uh, if you want, this is what dot 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 could mean or dot 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 or extra terms which are non local or further, further apart interactions. But if you just look at this part of the Hamiltonian as I already argued is what you have here is, this is the limit where J is equals J, that's the one that we discussed before, which is related to just by 180 degree rotation to the other, J is equals J here. Then you have as the lowest energy state, just the triplet balance bond. This is this MZ equals zero triplet. And you have these three states up here, 
Uh, on the other hand, if you have j z equals minus j, then this is just a thermomagnetic Heisenberg direction. So you have the triplet at the lower state. And we're interested in the regime where this, this state has is sufficiently low as compared to these states so that we can sort of uh, consider the effective physics described by this triplet balance form. We can give us some enhancement. In terms of applications, it turns out that actually this kind of Hamiltonian here appears in the description of the mod insulating states in uh, twisted uh, transition metal homopi layers. Uh, it turns out that, so this is a picture of it, right? this is tungsten by selenide twisted. Uh, what you can see here is actually uh, this um, mod insulating state in experiment in uh, resistivity measurements. And um, the reason why you get this, this term here, which is a term which you know, it needs to have, you need some spin orbit coupling in, in the problem to get this kind of term here, it is actually inherited from the spin valley locking that we have in uh, this twisted, or generally in, in this uh, tungsten diselenide. Um, so ultimately, what, what you get then from the spin valley locking is ultimately you get a, an effective Hubbard model on the Moiré super lattice. This Hubbard model has spin dependent hopping. Uh, so uh, and actually, this can even change the sign of the different spin components, allowing to ultimately have a gate tunable. As a function of this displacement field, j over j is equal, which is between minus one and We also uh, argue that it might have, so this, this, uh, this triplet RBB theory might have some applications also to uh, a quantum uh, spin liquid candidate material, a class of candidate materials, which is tantalum disulfide, tantalum disulfide. Um, these are actually spin liquid candidate materials which appear on a charge density wave super lattice. So this is actually an uh, artist's impression of this. Um, it has a, the charge density wave actually leads to this uh, formation of Star of David, where uh, 13 or actually 12 uh, uh, tantalum atoms are, are contracted towards a central tantalum atom. And uh, as a, the, the band structure that you get effectively for this um, in the charge density wave uh, involves uh, bands such, such that these 12, the electrons stemming from these 12 outer atoms essentially are going to fill some, some states, some bands below the Fermi energy. And then ultimately what you're left with is essentially a tight binding model, a Hubbard model describing electrons hopping from the central site to the next central site. Um, it is actually, uh, while it is pretty clear that uh, there is mod physics, and for example, what you can see here, this uh, SDM measurement for this tantalum diselenide, uh, and you see actually Hubbard bands, uh, you see a nice gap, which is associated with a mod gap, interpreted as a mod gap. Um, it is not exactly clear what the effective uh, um, magnetic Hamiltonian would be like. In fact, it is also not clear, neither experimentally nor uh, theoretically, it's quite clear whether it is really an antiferromagnetic um, uh, Heisenberg model on this triangular. Uh, Hubbard model. Uh, what you can see here, for example, is so first of all, in theory, theory always, so DFT up initio theories tend to predict ferromagnetic interactions. Uh, okay, good, that's up initial. Maybe this cannot capture this physics of model localization here. But also experiments, what you can see here, for example, is the intercepts of um, the one over uh, susceptibility. And uh, here it actually even intercept, has intercepted positive, uh, small positive temperatures. There are other experiments which are small negative temperatures. It's hard to extract from this what the local um, uh, interaction, sign of interaction. So what we are bringing up here is actually just the idea that could you have a quantum spin liquid out of local ferromagnetic And we're just using this Hamiltonian to see what happens if we do that. And also we're going to dope this uh, system later and we'll see what kind of superconductor comes out will be a time reversal symmetry breaking P plus IP superconductor. And I don't have a slide for this, but it turns out that for this uh, tantalum disulfide, there is a way of doping it in, a, in, a, in another structure, which is actually a sandwich structure of one quantum spin liquid candidate, one metal, one quantum spin liquid candidate, one metal. It's 4HB tantalum disulfide. And uh, that one actually is a time reversal symmetry breaking superconductor, making some contact to our field. Good. So um, 
Let me show you what we did for this particular Hamiltonian of uh, uh, this uh, spin problem on a square or triangle lattice. Uh, we are doing a mean field calculation, which can also be controlled by a symplectic uh, N method, uh, but I'm going to concentrate here only on the SUP case, which is strictly speaking uncontrolled, but I'm just saying that we also did a control calculation. This here is a, a calculation in which we're using Aprikosov fermions, pseudo fermions to describe the spin. So for example, the sigma z here is going to be represented by f stagger sigma z f, where f are some pseudo fermions that we introduced. We have to impose that there is exactly one fermion per side. So these are uh, Lagrange multipliers we're doing. This. And we're now doing actually uh, a mean field calculation. That means that we're going to Hubbard's Satonovich decouple these terms here. And from that, we're getting actually effective uh, an effective quadratic Hamiltonian describing the uh, hopping and the pairing of these spin-ons. Are these spin-ons gapless? They will be gapless. So it turns out that the, the mean field solution that we get, okay, let me show it, is going to be with a direct hop in either situation. So, so exactly, so the, the mean field order parameters that we have is a hopping of spin-ons from side to side. Uh, in the case of the, the square letters, there are two options. We're only looking at homogeneous solutions to the mean field equation. Um, and there are three different hopping terms uh, in the unit cell for the triangle letters. And similarly, there are pairing terms which are taken into account. We're coupling this both in pairing and hopping. And, uh, and the important bit is that the hopping comes with the sigma z here that's different as compared to usual RPG theory and is related to this anisotropic. Uh, it's uh, easy plane and isotropy. And also the pairing term is actually a, this is trying to give the triplet pair at two adjacent sites with uh, spin orientation mz equal zero. Right, and then you do mean field and we end up with this, uh, the lowest energy state at the mean field level is a state with these nodes in both cases. And this is actually a, a superconductor. At, at least it has one of the components, at least one of the components of the mean field order parameter. And then next step is to do a TJ, as I said, uh, a TJ model. So we're now doping the system. We're allowing up to one electron per site. And uh, asking the question, what happens on doping to this spin liquid? Uh, we're doing this with slave bosons. Uh, so you have now an additional hopping term. The C dagger C is going to, so C is going to be represented by B dagger F. B is a holon. So whenever you have no electron on the side, you have one B. Uh, and when you have a spin on the side here, uh, then you have so an electron is going to be encoded in the spin on states. So the spin is going to be encoded in the spin on states. And of course, the condition is that um, you have a total occupation of one if you sum up holons and spin-ons on a given side. Now here the new, the addition is that fermions and bosons mutually determine nearest neighbor hopping. And that is now actually going to give us the possibility to get uh, a, a real superconductor. So, so far this year is a superconductor of spin-ons, but in reality it's just a modern simulator. Uh, now we have uh, the charge being uh, uh, liberated and, and the charge can be uh, flowing around, in particular, as soon as these Bs here condense, we get a problem. And thereby, one can get actually the following phase diagram as a function of temperature and doping. So I, I discussed already no doping. Uh, this is actually true, essentially the same way for triplet and sorry for a triangular and for the square lattice. <clears throat> there is a, a transition temperature at the mean field level, which is describing the appearance of sort of the order parameters for the spin-ons that I discussed before, so both pairing and hopping. And this is called the this is a temperature which describes the appearance of the TREP state. And in this sense, this is a quantum spin liquid, even though I'm speaking here about a finite temperature state. And then there is another temperature which is red right here, which is describing a PKT transition where these bosons form a superfluid in two dimensions. And what you get then is you get actually this phase diagram where you have here uh, a state which is not yet a superconductor, it behaves like a, a quantum spin liquid, but with the triplet bonds. 
Uh, and then out of it, when you dope it, you can get a P plus IP superconductor. And as I mentioned, it has some vague resemblance to this uh, quantum spin liquid candidate material uh, quantum SO5. Good. So um, this is the part on this. So I spoke so far about a single, um, single orbital model on a square and on a triangle lattice. And it's essentially uh, translating what is known by Kotli and you for uh, the case of uh, you know, usual antiferromagnetic Heisenberg interactions to our situation of this anisotropic um, uh, ferromagnetic system. Now I'm going to switch gears to a multi orbit. And I'm applying TRVB as a concept to multi orbit systems. And there are several motivations. I'm going to flash two, and then I'm going to discuss a third one in more detail. So um, Piers and Yasha actually started thinking about this um, triplet RBP state because they were discussing, their, uh, they were collaborating on this experimental paper with there is a critical behavior in a ferromagnetic system uh, that's called Sergei here, uh, and actually has some, so what, what they needed is some mechanism that does not lead to a first order transition as you would potentially expect for this uh, system and came up with this entanglement due to triplet pairs. Another class of system, which is multi-orbital in some way, is uh, uh, uranium ditellaride and similar heavy fermion systems, where uh, you have, again, um, multiple orbitals. And uh, Pierce and uh, Mark Knight recently uh, extended the TRVB concept to this system, where multiple orbitals, in this case, refers also to conduction uh, electrons and uh, F electrons. I would like to speak about ion based superconductors uh, and ask the question whether TRVB has any uh, way of helping us understanding ion based superconductors better. So, what's, what's the question about ion based superconductors that is open? And I think this is an important question that is open and has not been discussed that much in the, in the community. The question about universality in ion-based superconductors. What you can see here is um, the maximal gap. So it's a multi this ion-based superconductors have multiple pockets, multiple fermi surfaces, and the gaps are anisotropic. But you can always try to find out what is the maximal gap that you find in the superconductor. So this is a maximal gap at zero temperature plotted against Tc, <clears throat> and you see that for a variety of systems, this falls onto a straight line with two delta over Tc being or twice the value of universal. This suggests that there is somehow a universal mechanism for a variety of ion-based superconductors. And importantly, these various ion-based superconductors are very different in terms of their electronic structures. So for example, there is this here, potassium ion selenide, uh, which is only electron pockets. Or there is this one, which has uh, electron hole pockets, as in this RM1 to 2. Um, series. And for example, if you extremely hole dope it, you end up in a problem which has only hole pockets. So you have three different Fermi surface topologies, and all of them give you essentially the same two delta over Tc. This is a, a motivation to look into a universal mechanism for superconductivity in the ion based superconductor. And importantly, I would like to mention that actually um, for S plus minus, which is I think the, the state which is um, uh, commonly believed to be uh, um, realized in the ion-based superconductors, S plus minus uh, originally required to have central hole and outer electron pocket. And this might not be realized in all of these. Now the question is, what is universal in the ion-based superconductors? What do they all have in common? Not the electronic structure, but what is the same everywhere is the local environment of the ion atom. So what you have is actually you have this tetrahedral environment around an ion atom. This is the ion atom. This leads to this crystal field splitting where you have uh, essentially two electrons in a T2G shell which are active. We're taking this as the main ingredient. We're taking strong Hund's interaction as, as, a, as an important ingredient and considerable spin orbit coupling, which is still larger than Tc. And we're asking the question whether we can use TRVB here 
as a way to find a, a universal mechanism for connectivity, and ideally even one which brings us to delta or the sequence <coughs> center. So I think we have a universal mechanism, but we don't have 7.2, and that's actually part, part of this. Still open for us to see whether TRVP can actually give this stuff. But let me explain at least how TRVP works in this multi open The idea is actually that the TRVP bonds are already stabilized on the atomic level on the given ion atom. So, what you have here is a picture corresponding to the three orbitals, the three T2G orbitals on a given ion atom. Uh, so they are now represented as a triangle, and I'm putting two electrons in it. And by Hund's rule, you know that these two electrons have to point in the same direction. They have the same spin orbit. Uh, and spin orbit coupling actually chooses, let's say you take dxz and dyz orbitals, it chooses to be mz equals zero state here, which is exactly the triplet valence bond state that I discussed at the beginning. Now it's just on a given atom in center. Of course, here I discussed just uh, just place these two electrons on dx and dyz. In principle, I could place them, of course, also on the other bonds, the other links here. And uh, there is some degeneracy which actually allows you to um, resonate between at least two out of these three configurations at no energy cost. So there's already some resonating valence bonds on a given ion cut. Turns out that actually the spin orbit coupling chooses mz as a quantization axis in this direction, mx in this direction, and here ny. So that's uh, a minor aspect of not primary, primary importance. Okay, <clears throat> so this is just a way of writing the local, the local uh, state on a given ion atom. It's just L equals one, S equals one, J equals zero. And the question is whether you can actually uh, liberate these TRVB preform pairs to create a superconductor which is macroscopically The question is really can you make, first of all, uh, bonds which are intersite? <coughs> and then when you dope the system, after all, these are actually metals, even though not particularly good ones. Um, what is the associated superconductor? And I was just going to summarize the main aspects of the superconductivity. That you would get from this TRVP mechanism. But the first thing that I wanted to highlight is that actually this is a superconductor, of course, the theorists, but this is a superconductor which has a Cooper instability and its crucial importance that we actually have a non symorphic lattice structure uh, with a center of inversion which is between the ion atoms. And as a consequence thereof, the gap is actually alternating from side to side. I need to explain why this is. On a given ion atom, I explained that you can get this preformed triplet bond. These are triplets. That means that they are uh, they are symmetric in spin space. They are anti-symmetric in orbit space. When you have a band structure, the band structure of the, of the ion-based superconductors, it has strong inter interside interorbital hopping. So it will actually the, the Fermi surfaces have no degeneracy except for spin. So on the Fermi surface, the bonds that you have, so the, the, the Cooper pairs that you want to create on the Fermi surface, they also have to be odd in something. But our problem is that uh, we already made them spin. In spin, we made them actually, uh, this is spin, symmetric in spin space. So how do we create this uh, uh, um, odd, so what you actually want to have something like odd parity usually. On the on the Fermi surface, and the, the standard way of getting that is through spin orbit coupling. If you have a p times sigma p cross sigma term, then the triplet will mix on the Fermi surface into a single, and then you get a, a usually you can get a mixing out of triplet into a, a singlet uh, on the Fermi surface and get Cooper instability. Here we don't need spin orbit coupling. The trick is actually that here we have uh, a center of inversion which is not on the side. And that actually allows for hopping terms yep, for uh, wave function components on the Fermi surface, which already give you uh, a, a support of this triplet bonds uh, if you project it to the Fermi surface. Yeah. Since they have support on the Fermi surface, you will get a Cooper. <clears throat> now it's important actually that uh, now this 
to get a to get a, a, a um, an overall wave function which has which suffices a Pauli principle, you get to have you have to have delta uh, uh, alternating here because inversion symmetry actually is now mapping this side to this side and thereby gets, gets a minus sign under um, inversion despite the fact that it is even in spin space. Okay, so, so as a consequence of this Cooper instability, it follows that Cooper instability without spin orbit coupling, it follows that the on site gap is alternating in space. So that's a physical prediction. <clears throat> if you actually project this state onto the Fermi surface, it's a triplet state, right? So it has actually a d vector. It turns out that the non zero components of the d vector are dx and dy. Uh, and what you can see is that there are several. Uh, sign changes represented by blue and red on the Fermi surface. These sign changes lead actually to signatures both in quasi particle interference and also in, uh, in spin fluctuations, which are very similar to the signatures that you would get from an S plus minus state. <coughs> because ultimately these are um, probes which are just checking whether there are sign changes at a given Q vector effect in here. The gas structure is very anisotropic for this. Uh, triplet RBB induced state. Um, uh, and it has actually even some nodes which are uh, becoming quasi nodes if you include a little bit of spin orbit coupling. And finally, what you get from this is actually an anisotropic spin susceptibility, which is actually a prediction that would require to look into night shift data again for this sign. Okay. So, what we have here is actually a, a local mechanism for superconductivity in the ion bed connector. Um, it is based on this preformed triplet pair. It includes, it checks several boxes of our original uh, requirements, in particular, it's stabilized by Hund's interactions. Um, it does not help us with this delta over TC being, delta over, two delta over TC being 7.2. Uh, and we still need to find a way to that. And I want to just briefly show an outlook <clears throat> beyond this fermionic TRVB mechanism that we've looked so far. So our strategy, as a strategy reminder, what we have experimentally as an input is this universality into delta over TC. And we argue that this should lead to some local pairing. And uh, we discussed uh, triplet RBD, which is, as I mentioned, it's a local pairing mechanism that is stabilized by home There are other uh, approaches which are also leading to, um, these are more phenomenological, also in some way local, a uh, suggestion that a, in a Huns metal, uh, the local the spin, the spin uh, susceptibility has a power law form, which is omega to the minus 1.2. And if you do a Eliasberg theory with this here, so it's a phenomen purely phenomenological model, you actually end up with a two delta over TC being 1.2. So what we did recently is we went from this fermionic here the discussion to a, a Schwinger boson approach to Hund's impurities. And I just wanted to flash very briefly that here, actually, when you dope the system slightly and you have such a Hund's impurities treated, treated with these Schwinger bosons, we do find quasi power laws which actually have a power which is very similar to this power here and could potentially lead to the ultimate um, uh, universal ratio of 2 delta. Good. So this concludes the part on triplet RBB theory. Yes. So as I understand it, your superconductivity should be heat. Oh no. So this is this was a, just for the first okay, the so first I, part. I, I the important bit here is that it is it is up in this in this if you want to call this a unit cell. Well, I mean since it's a non since there is a non thermopic structure, you can actually take a unit cell which is just one side. But let's take two sides as yes. unit cell, and it's up okay. in this. Okay. That's the main point. Uh, it has to be all in something, and it's all in this two sides of you. Yeah. And what I didn't quite understand is you motivated it by saying something about electron A and electron B. In this case, do you get similar behavior for all three? Yes, I think that this is. is that one of so, so uh, um, okay, we didn't do the calculations specifically for all of these different band structures that you get up on doping, but in principle, this is this Cooper symmetry, this Cooper instability is symmetry allowed in any of these cases. And that's the important uh, aspect that is really new and something. 
to try and coordinate my understanding of this with relation to, to continuum superconducting wave functions. Is, is there a, um, a P wave superconducting wave function where you project it on the lattice appropriately and you get um, your TRVB? So for the single part, yeah, it's just that it's just exactly. So for this single orbital, which is a little bit easier than this non symmetric crystal mm -hmm. spectrum, it's just that you take a P wave P plus IP superconductor and you put it up projected. Yeah, never appear. So, so is there a weak coupling approach to the same physics that you're talking about? Uh, so you mean weak coupling for just for the superconductivity? I, or you, yes, with maybe bringing in the local physics through justification of that projection. Ah, I see. Yes, I would say so. Yes, I mean we're doing this in this field theoretical way with this uh, um, fractionalization approach, but in principle, yes. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a human experimentalist, and I'm not very familiar with this. Uh, is, is the nature preferred pneumaticity or this? Uh, I didn't understand. The, uh, is you, I, I, I'm based on. I'm based on. Are you asking whether nematicity is of any importance for this yeah, yeah. Sorry, no, it's not. So you don't need. To, you don't need nematicity. Now, um, so would the would the nematicity be but does it compete? Is, is it, can we say that it competes? Would you say it competes? Oh, 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 yeah, it doesn't have a good quicker. Okay, so. Let me switch to the second part and then make an, a connection. So, so far I spoke about a, um, an approach to triple superconductivity, which is based on entanglement. So somehow some spin liquids, which I started to then uh, liberate the charge. So I now do a second quick introduction into artificial emulators of quantum spin liquids, including triple quantum spin liquids. And from there, discuss the second project or line of research um, on strong quantum fluctuations in triple superconductivity. So at first sight, this has nothing to do with what I spoke before, but you will see it has something to do with triple superconductivity and strong quantum fluctuations. What you see here is a guitar wire. This is a, a one-dimensional P-wave superconductor, which has uh, Majorana edge states called alpha and beta at the end. Uh, and what I'm doing now is I'm taking this wire to be sufficiently small that the uh, charging energy becomes important, but it's still sufficiently large that these Majorana edge states don't overlap. This is called a Majorana Cooper pair box. So, as you remember, in the usual Cooper pair box, which is just a microscopic floating superconductor, uh, you have a charging energy, and as a function of the back gate that I didn't draw here, there are these parabola of states that you can have. Uh, and the, the parabola are usually just uh, characterized by a charge, which is an even multiple of E. Just to put it in order. Now you have these Majorana states here at left and right. So what you can also do is you can occupy, so you can make all these two Majoranas a single term. And you can occupy it, which allows you to have additional parabola, which are drawn red here, where you have an odd pairing. So this is the, the Majorana Cooper pair box. And what I would like to do now is I would like to actually take two of those here just to motivate how to get a spin liquid. <clears throat> um, I would like to take two of these wires and couple them by, uh, let's say, another, or couple them together just by Joseph's injunction in such a way that the overall phase is the same on this and this wire. So there's only one phase on this island. So this is one big island, only one phase which is fluctuating. And there are four Majoranas, or equivalently two complex units. And you can actually, let's say we are staying in this uh, parabola, which is centered around zero. This is actually defining you a qubit, because you can have an overall charge zero on this island in two different ways. One way is you put no electrons on the Majoranas, uh, and uh, <coughs> zero electrons in total, so no extra Cooper pairs on, in, the Cooper, in the superconducting structure. 
And the other one is you take one less Cooper pair, but then occupy these guys. So, so there is a down state, which is there is no occupation of Majoranas. And the up state is you, uh, you, you occupy all the, so the, the fermions associated to these Majoranas and have one less Cooper pair on them. Say again, please. What do you mean by one less? Ah, I want to have an overall charge which is zero. If I, if I put two, <coughs> if I put electrons, so I make out of this here, I make some complex electrons, complex fermions, and now I want to occupy them. So I have two electrons, in them, which are somehow in these red dots. But to have the same charge, I have to take one less group of pairs. So the, on, on the phase part of this. <coughs> and this creates a, a cube. Yeah. So you're saying you absorb two electrons, that makes the up state. Okay. Exactly. The up state is and the one where I have one and one to prepare. Exactly. I take one to prepare out of the bulk and put it on my run. And these are two different states. And this defines the qubit, and you can actually then define also the gates of this qubit uh, by just doing something with the This Majorana Cooper pair box can be used to build quantum spin liquid artificially. For example, if you put them in this array here, you create a topological Josephson junction. Array. And what you have is from island to, so first of all, each island has a charging energy. It's called EC. You can hop from island to island, just a Cooper pair. This is just the usual Josephson junction. But there is also a hopping which is not a charge 2E transfer, as Josephson, but it's a charge E transfer, at which point, however, you have to change the parity on these islands. So essentially what you're doing is one island is in a charge zero, is in a zero parabola, and the, one, the other one in a one parabola. And then you transfer charge E, which got, means that they have the, swapped their parity. Right? One of them is the other one. So the first one is then in, in the red, and the other one in the blue. What happens to the one zero, zero one state? Okay, so, so this here is what happens if you're concentrating on the limit where the charging energy is most important. Then you actually get a qubit on a given item. And in fact, I'm going to discuss this when a charging energy is most important, you get a you get sort of a mod insulator. So the one zeros and zero ones are charging energy Q above that. The the ones this one's oh one zero and zero one, yeah, they're, they're energy U above. Sorry, yeah, exactly. Um, okay, it just depends on how you how you put the gate one, right? Whether you want to have one electron total of the ion, I mean an odd parity or an even parity. So the important bit is that you have now three terms as compared to usual Joseph function arrays, you have three terms which are competing. One of them is, so of course there's charging energy, there's Cooper pair tunneling, and there is single E tunneling. This is called EM here, and this, and I should say that this EM and this EM is not the same. Different authors use the same letter for different things. EM here means charge E to the same concentration. So charge E hopping from here to here. And when EM is zero, it's just an ordinary Josephson junction array. It has a superconducting phase and it has something that is a mod insulator. But now, if you add to this the information that, ah, okay, so I put all of these islands into the zero state, and I remember that actually for each island, there is a qubit once I fix the charge in a given island. You can ask the question, how do these qubits, which are living on each of these islands, the effective spins interact? It turns out that by super exchange to fourth order, so there is some, some terms here that you get by just fourth order perturbation theory here, you get the toric So this directly matches the toric In the limit, in this limit here, sorry. And you get a toric code ground state, which re relates to the there is a There is a third phase here, which is the phase where this charge E tunneling is predominant. And it's actually what they call here an E superconductor. Okay. It just means that this is, a, this is a conductive state and it has charge E at it. As compared to this one, which is a conductive or superconductive state, has charge two A. Would that would 
naively the amount of electric flux, uh, magnetic flux known as the flux has to be h over e rather than h over two e. Ah. So that makes sense. So I would say twice the amount of uh, yeah, get that right. twice, twice the amount of magnetic flux. So you say the flux for this superconductor, you have a different flux quantum than for the Newton. Would you? I would have think. I would have thought of it. You probably thought about this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It depends on the situation. Whether you get the H over two is binding to the equivalent of the H over two. I see. Of course, experimentally, no one's ever seen. Yeah. Isn't there a story about um, um, superconductivity kind of spin? Where the vortex is actually a skirming on, and then the half skirming on is a sort of narrow. Yeah, uh, it turns out that h over an h over two e h over e flux can bind a bison. I see. Like I see. Of h over two e or something I like that. Can't remember the story. And thereby defeat your hope that you will see signs of this. So if I do little parts of this, they would they potentially still look the same as. That you you that or what's the experiment? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the danger. These, these are discussions that occurred long, long ago in the context of spin nucleus, so and they're still raging today. And I wonder whether they're done or not. Can you talk a little bit for how we get to our project? Yeah. What you were talking about yeah. is yesterday, you know, how do you come yeah. at it? You've got a couple of minutes. Yeah. 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 You don't have that. So the important information is you have the Z and X gates. So the Z gate. It's just measuring whether you have up or down state. And that's because essentially what you have here is you have a, the energy tells you that uh, so the product of alpha, beta, gamma, delta is one of these. That means that I alpha, beta is the same as I gamma, delta. So when I do I alpha, beta, I measure whether I'm in this state or in this state because it measures just, let's say, the first of these two entries. Mm -hmm. And that is just a sigma. The sigma x is the one which is flipping from here to here. And you can actually see how it does it. So you have uh, delta beta, let's say, or let's say this one, yeah? Delta beta, which is equivalent to this one, it is flipping the occupancy from here to here. So it does, if you just look at, at what it does in the, on the parity of the upper one, since it has only one Majorana from the upper one, it will flip the parity of the upper of these two runs. It means that it flips it from here. That's the sigma x. Okay, and now you look at what, what's happening if you do fourth order perturbation theory in this um, single charge hopping. Single charge hopping is the Majorana, which is whatever at the end of wherever you want to hop, times e to the i phi, mm -hmm. i one phi, not two phi, as compared to zero. And when you do this, you get actually, when you do this fourth order perturbation theory, such that you end up, so when you do one jump, you of course get into a virtual state, which is higher energy because you go. You know, you get you have to pay charging energy. But you can do it in a circular way, such that at the end you come back in the charge configuration that you had before. But as you do so, you get a product of all of these Majoranas around a given. Okay. And actually, what it gives you is something like Z, X. So X is always these two, and Z is always these two. So it's going to be Z, X, Z, X. So when you get this uh, around every product plaquette, Z, X, Z, X, Z, X. Sorry, Z, X, Z, X. This is equivalent to the Tory code. The Tory code is actually Z, 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 and X, X, X in different types of packets, but you can really find in a way that it's the same. So it's now Z, X, Z, X on every single packet. It's actually Z, X, Z, X on every single packet, but it's totally equivalent to the Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we actually even uh, extended this to a couple of fermions to all this stuff. Let's get up here to my extent. Um, to, to make this story that I alluded to in the end of yesterday's talk, <coughs> where you couple fermions. But what I would like to actually highlight is that, well, you could also start to study a simpler model, which is just a topological dosage intention chain, which is just, uh, just one of these rods. And you have this hopping between here and here, and there's again EM, which is a single charge transfer, and EC, EJ, which is a full Cooper pair transfer. You get this phase diagram, which is actually not so different from this one. There is a charge 2E, okay, it's called lambda liquid in one dimension. There is a charge E Langer liquid. And there is a mod insulator here. And there are various uh, transitions. Uh, and actually, yesterday, 
pay me tears and I discuss this next day in a bit. But there are some costless starless transitions in blue here and some easing transitions in pink. The important bit is that there are all of these different transitions. And what we're studying here really is the problem of Pitaev chains. This is essentially the same topology of Pitaev chain. In this case, a granular version thereof with strong quantum fluctuation. You can also study this in a continuum model. This is actually, and this is already a spinless, this is a spinless high problem, it's a spinless supercomputer. In some way, also, just as an attempted spin polar, right? Which is P wave. So what we have here is a normal state Hamiltonian. And then we have here the pairing Hamiltonian. And it's P wave in a one dimensional system, so psi dx psi. And it has uh, a phase, superconducting phase called equal to I2 phi. And what we're doing here is we let the space fluctuate. And we're just describing this by a two fluid model. So it's one, it's, this is the continuum version of this. And actually, it has a phase diagram which depends on whether the chemical potential is in, in the band, in the fermionic band, in which case you have topological state. And you have so-called weak pairing in the sense that the, well, the, the wave functions of the Cooper pair is um, uh, relatively extended. As compared to a situation where the chemical potential is outside the, the band, then actually you can just forget about that there was a band which could have ever turned into logic. You're essentially just describing this Lambda liquid. It doesn't know anything about topology. Uh, and it's sort of a B3 <laughs> limit. So you first form molecules which are super pair and then condense them. So when the when the stiffness is sufficiently high, you get actually superconducting phases, either of trivial or topological kind, and in between there's actually a curious easing transition with emergent Lorentz symmetry in one point. But then you can have the situation here that you have vortices which are proliferating as the stiffness becomes lower, so final phase lift. You get into a mod insulating state, which somehow makes the next through here. Um, and here, actually, the situation is slightly different because the vortices that are allowed, the quantum phase that are allowed, are special. So, for this problem of phase fluctuations in the Kitaev chain with topology, it's important to keep in mind that phase slips do something special in the topological case. And to see that, I'd like to first think about the problem of phase slip at a single weak junction. And you can even do it first uh, in, a, in a setup, in a Gedanken experiment, where this phase slip is not a, a spontaneous quantum phase slip, but just an experimentalist who ramps up the phase at two pi. When you do this for this topological system, there will be actually a, there will be this um, parity enforced symmetry, parity symmetry enforced crossing of Andreev bound states, which ultimately leads to the fact that what used to be the ground state with even parity after insertion of flux to pi is, this, is an excited state, and the ground state is now a state of odd parity. So inserting flux to pi, of course, is equivalent to doing nothing in the sense that the spectrum has to go back to itself. But the wave functions don't, and in particular, the many-body wave function is now, after insertion of flux to pi, has changed the fermion parity. So now you can ask the question, instead of doing this, as an experimentalist, just ramping up the, up the flux, you can ask the question, can I have spontaneous quantum phase slips which change you know, the flux or the phase difference by two pi? This would need uh, a phase slip which also connects uh, ground states in the fermionic sector with even an odd parity. So it requires a fermion from somewhere, and that's not possible. So, so phase slips with phase change of two pi are disallowed in this problem. And therefore, the leading phase slip that is actually condensing here, the vortices which are proliferating are four pi. So it's important to keep in mind that the topology has implications on the many body physics. And here it was the situation of a spinless problem. And I would like to now return to the problem of triplet pairing and spinful variant of this problem. So this is actually the, the project that I wanted to present in the last five to 10 minutes. This problem is a, a variant of this one, but it's for spinful fermions. So these psi's here are spinful and number spinners. 
We have a normal state here, normal state Hamiltonian, which is just parabolic distribution in one dimension. And we have a pairing, which is it's spin triplet. So first of all, it is P wave, so it has one derivative. And it has an order parameter field, which is e to the i theta. Theta is the name here. Sorry, there's a different notation in here. Theta is the name of is the variable used for the superconducting phase. And n is the orientation of the Cooper pair spin. And similar to the way that uh, Charlie Kane and others did it for a spinless case, um, we do a we use a sort of a two fluid approach. So we couple this. We let these Order parameter field fluctuate, and it's characterized by its own bosonic action. It's a Luttinger liquid for the charge sector, and it is a sigma model in the spin sector. Each of them has their own stiffness. Or <coughs> this corresponds actually to a class D3 as compared to class D, and it's the same question what happens beyond mean field to this topological one dimension? And here, actually, the phase diagram is not only known. Here, the phase diagram is not exactly known what happens here, for example. But in principle, the phases are known. Here, I think the question is much more complicated. And in particular, again, it's a question of what happens in the topological case where the chemical potential is in the band as compared to the situation when the chemical potential is out of the band. OK, so let me first summarize what would happen in the topological tri topologically trivial case, which is actually the same that would happen in a <coughs> two plus zero dimensional statistical problem of the same uh, post Einstein condensation of so spinner post Einstein condensation. So, in the topologically trivial case, you can actually think, OK, my bosons have an excitation gap. They're far away. I can forget about them. I just integrate them out. They won't do anything. Then I just have to analyze what happens to this bosonic action. Okay, so let's assume that we're still in a superconducting phase for the moment. Um, superconducting in the sense that Kc is sufficiently high that this guy here has no vortices to attach to it. And now I'm sorry, I have actually here a, a notational um, clash. But um, the important bit is that the correlators of uh, the order parameter field is actually short range. And the reason it's short range that the order is that the order parameter is e to the i theta, and sorry, here I call it e to the i phi times n. And it fractionalizes in sort of the charge and the spin part. But the spin part is short range because this is a sigma model in one plus one dimension. And it flows towards strong coupling, it has a gap. Uh, and you're going to say that it might become gapless. This is what happens at the end. So, so this problem here is just delta is just e to the i phi times n. Delta dagger is e to the minus i phi times n. n is a real unit vector. But this correlator with this action is exponentially. Even though this guy is a power law, if there are what is he such? Perhaps no microscopic even on ordinary spins. Yes. Okay. Well, yes. I think you can yeah, so there, okay. Um, I wonder whether they should. Let me first tell the story and then I give an answer for you. So this looks as if there was no superconductivity. There are at least no off diagonal long range order in Delta. But what you can do is actually you can study what happens with two. You create, you create uh, uh, two Cooper pairs here and annihilate two here. And you can make it in such a way that they form essentially a singlet. Just take the scalar product of Delta transpose Delta. N is a unit vector drops out, so you just get a correlator of e to the i two theta or two phi, sorry, and e to the minus two phi, and it's just a power law. So we have algebraic order of four e superconductivity in the topological trivial case. Then you can ask yourself the question: Okay, so what happens with vortices? Turns out that actually even half quantum vortices are enough to disorder the system, but I won't go into details for that. The important information is that at best we have a four e superconductivity. And then below a certain strength of uh, the stiffness here, you get a disorder. Now, topological case. Okay, so here is uh, what, well, Pierce already uh, guessed the answer. 
So when you integrate out the fermions, you have to be a bit careful. Uh, and what you actually get, and I'm explaining why also, you get a theta term for this uh, spin part of the, of the action. This theta term is at theta equals pi, which is the same that actually happens in a spot, spot half integer uh, spin chain. Let's say spin one half chain, antiferromagnetic spin one half chain. What you end up is with is this Hamiltonian with a with a theta term, this theta term actually gives a very phase to topological space-time configurations of the Cooper pair spin and leads ultimately to the fact that correlators of n are algebraic. As a consequence thereof, uh, the correlator of the Cooper pairs, uh, so the off and long range order is algebraic here, and you do have a 2e superconductor. Actually, a little bit more subtle. Uh, you can also have gapless single fermion uh, citations. Uh, and also, this again, another aspect that I uh, uh, alluded to before is that actually you have four pi vortices which are condensing in this case. This is because two pi vortices essentially in the charge sector are not allowed because of this fermion parity argument that I gave before. And you can have actually here, even when you have KC so low that you don't have long range order in theta, you can actually create uh, these objects, which are essentially in pneumatic order parameter um, below the, the, the critical stiffness in the charge sector. But the important information is that when the charge sector is, uh, is a Luttinger liquid, you actually do get a 2E superconductor. Yes. So when you integrate by the fermions, you don't get anything in the other? Also the you don't get anything topological. What you do get, and I didn't really uh, discuss this, you do renormalize all of these parameters. <clears throat> okay, so you don't get, for example, a sign term. Like ah, no, you don't get any sign term. Okay, <clears throat> so how get, do you get this theta term? There are two ways that we did. One of them is through non-abelian organization, and I'm not going to discuss it. Another one is a more, uh, more an argumentation. So what this theta term does here, it actually gives uh, so to the position sum, it gives plus or minus sign uh, to the contributions with an even or odd number of skirmions in this n field. A skirmion actually can be decomposed into a meron and an antimeron. And a meron is something like a vortex outside the core, and inside the core it can either point up or down. That's the difference between a meron and an antimeron. But far away, it looks like a vortex. Vortex is the uh, classical word for facelift in space time. Yeah? So it's a, a vortex in space time is a facelift in, uh, in real time. Yeah? Okay, so this looks like a, like a facelift in spin space. And I explained before that actually there, are, there is this level crossing when you crank up, when you have a facelift. And this level crossing leads to um, really take it as a dynamical field configuration of the background bosonic field. It leads to zero modes in the um, kernel here of the fermions. So there are these dynamical zero modes for a given field configuration, which has uh, a, a vortex. And in particular, for a meron and antimeron, it looks as if it was a vortex in spin space. However, uh, inside the core, these zero modes that are trapped to this uh, space time uh, dynamical topological configuration inside the core, the zero modes from spin up and spin down sector can hybridize, which ultimately leads to uh, when you integrate out all the fermions, uh, what you have to do is you take the puffin of this kernel K here, and this puffin is proportional to the contribution of the two Majoranas that are trapped inside more meron and antimeron for up and down uh, case. And our hybridizing, so effectively, what you get is the contribution from this hybridized low energy quasi zero modes. Uh, and the puffin thereof is actually proportional to just e to the i pi half, which is nothing but measuring the skirmish number of a meron, which is a half. So you can use these arguments, which actually were originally due to Affleck in the context of the spin chains, to argue that there must be such a, a, a theta chain. As I said, um, 
uh, you can also get it with the uh, ozonization. And Pierce asked the question where this here comes from, which looks as if there was a spin one half instead of a spin one Cooper pair. You can try to understand it on the level of a given Cooper pair box. So imagine you have a, a Majorana Cooper pair box, so a mesoscopic triplet system, which has fluctuating phase and Cooper, Cooper pair orientation. So the, the Hamiltonian, therefore, is in the spin sector, it's just elsewhere. It's a rotor. It's a three-dimensional rotor. And when you now take into account, that, okay, so maybe on the, and on the, in the charge sector, it's just d phi squared, right? It's n squared. As I explained, the Majoranas lead to this parabola in the charge space, space not only allowing uh, parabolas with minima at 0, 2, 4, et cetera, but it allows us the intermediate parabola, which is the one that you get for usual uh, fermions, we have uh, a, a charge which is what? One, three, five, etc. In the spin sector, something similar happens. Instead of having L squared, uh, after you integrate the fermions, you get something like L plus S squared. And S is the fermionic spin carried by Kramer's pair of Majoranas in this class D3. So class D3 has edge states, which are actually pairs of Majoranas, up down to Kramer's pairs of Majoranas. They can carry spin. And this is going to be added in the lower level. Well, I wonder sometimes statistics transmutation. Binding of an electron to a pair to make half individual objects, which then become. Uh huh. It just feels like you must have pairs that are in the heart. We can discuss that yeah. much more later. Okay, so this is actually concluding. This is concluding the talk. So I, I discussed two uh, research lines on strongly quantum fluctuating triplets. One of them are these triplet REB story, which on the one hand gives you some uh, non-standard quantum spin liquids with triplet bonds, but then they can actually lead to a, a superconductor uh, by, by triplet superconductors through entanglements, both in single orbital and multi-orbital properties. The other problem where you have strong fluctuations, strong quantum fluctuations in a triplet superconductor is this one-dimensional wire um, of well, in the Kitaev chain, or the, the one that we studied is the Kitaev chain with additional spin degree of this. Uh, and here, importantly, that you can get, because this, the band structure is topological, it has an implication on the many body physics, and that you can have a 2E superconductor, despite the fact that without the topological band structure, there is only 4E superconductor. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this is a one dimensional system, and you do have edge space. Edge space. So, so the, this is really the so the guy type chain has little less my at the edge. This one is a triplet superconductor, which is spin full, mm -hmm. not spin polarized, right? and it has a, it has time reversal symmetry. So it has a promise pair of my one as the edge. And as I try to uh, uh, argue for the answer here, so at least in the, in the single box, it's giving you a, a, a change of um, the effective spin that is on a given item. Yeah. Normally, on a, on, if you have a triple superconductor and make it microscopic, you have a, a spin one object because Cooper pairs are spin ones, but now these my can allow you to have a spin one. This was very ambitious, but what about experiments? Where are you going to test it? Yeah. So, um, it's hard to find your lowest hanging fruit in experiments like this. I hope it's even a test. Okay, so for the, for the triplet superconductor, um, what we hope for, and we have some. Realistical for that, is that at least in quantum emulator. So in some maybe for comics. There for them actually to 1D is not so difficult. They can tune the interaction that they want. Maybe. And uh, solid state, I guess, 
going to be more challenging. Okay. There's, I heard recently there's a magnitude of the new ion base which has been done. So this yes. ion silicon with high hydrogen you know, yes. It'll be very interesting to see if it actually lies. Oh, on this yeah. line. On this line. is for the first part. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't know yet. This can be expected as well. Yeah, so my feeling for the first part is yes. Alone after the first part, what's your smoking gun for the um, what, what would be your smoking gun for the system that would do at the form of the experiment? Yeah, so ideally, so what is really special about the status of ultimate smoke? Yeah. Can you really see this? We we tried to think about this. For a while, but you can really try to measure the ultimate as it in gap with different uh, experiments. Um, it's very challenging. We at least try to come up on how, how to do this. This is, I think, the most correct, the strongest characteristic. I wanted to make a connection with last week's talk uh -huh. because uh, because uh, Seamus showed us those in the panel, standing okay. out those in the panel. Uh, he was using it to look ahead and to look at the carbon yet, and he says. He's made a proposal for it, it just needs time. Okay. He said, no, no. Okay. So, in principle, you can. Do that would be then a testable proposal. We would think, of course, even two of those tests. Yeah, because you want to have the test go. Yeah, or at least in some He has really thought about it. Yeah, he's, he's really said, just accept the proposal when it comes to it. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Perhaps a bit specific, but you mentioned the four HP days of yeah. uh, but where does it exactly fall that uh, place in the first part of the presentation? Okay, so the, the first of all, this let's make very big for you know so one T is the um uh on top, which is which is actually the quantum chemical and there is another one this eight. Metal and becomes also superconducting by itself. And now, with this material is 4A3, is to stack it. Okay, so what's known about it is that it's from USR, for example, it is the center of the okay. We didn't do exactly this. What we did is we just took a triangle lattice problem of this uh, paramagnetic, so close to this quantum uh, spin liquid state, paramagnetic form, and doped it. So if you think of this, uh, the structure where you have a metal quantum metal, you could just think that these metallic layers are giving a bit of uh, you know charge towards the quantum spin liquid, or, or at the same time the quantum spin liquid is uh, uh, you know it, it gives its pre-entangled uh, pairs to this, to this metal. Um, we didn't elaborate more on this, but it's a curiosity that actually um, out of this relatively simple model made up. And they do see them as this is just coming I mean, as I tried to look for a, a decent model for the 4 HP phase yeah. that people take the one layer of one T and then work with that. And then they ah, discuss okay. possibilities. Yeah. Of what would happen if we consider the, the, the full stack? Yeah. I've never seen a proper discussion with a 4 HB yeah. model. Yeah. Here's some 